Welcome back to another in our series of great chapters in the Bible. Our chapter today comes from the Old Testament prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk's prayer in Habakkuk chapter 3. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet according to Shiganoth. O Lord, I have heard the report of you, and your work, O Lord, I do fear. In the midst of the years, revive it. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Teman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His splendor covered the heavens, and the earth was full of His praise. His brightness was like the light. Rays flashed from His hand, and there He veiled His power. Before Him went pestilence, and plague followed at His heels. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and shook the nations. Then the eternal mountains were scattered. The everlasting hills sank low. His were the everlasting ways. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction. The curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was your wrath against the rivers, O Lord? Was your anger against the rivers, or your indignation against the seas, when you rode on your horses, on your chariot of salvation? You stripped the sheath from your bow, calling for many arrows. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. The raging waters swept on. The deep gave forth its voice. It lifted its hands on high. The sun and the moon stood still in their place at the light of your arrows as they sped, at the flash of your glittering spear. You marched through the earth in fury. You threshed the nations in anger. You went out for the salvation of your people, for the salvation of your anointed. You crushed the head of the house of the wicked, laying him bare from thigh to neck. You pierced with his own arrows the heads of his warriors, who came like a whirlwind to scatter me, rejoicing as if to devour the poor in secret. You trampled the sea with your horses, the surging of mighty waters. I hear and my body trembles. My lips quiver at the sound. Rottenness enters into my bones. My legs tremble beneath me. Yet I will quietly wait for the day of trouble to come upon people who invade us. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places, to the choir master with stringed instruments. I have become fascinated with a gadget on my phone of late. It is on my phone and specifically on the camera app. I've been taking photographs for years. They capture a moment in time. I count on my memory to recall the exact moment that picture was taken to give it perspective. I also take videos to capture moments strung together a birthday party, a wedding, really any time I want to capture a period of time for memory's sake. But recently, I discovered the time-lapse button on my phone. In times past, I could look up at the sky in amazement at at clouds going by. But now, I see with time-lapse the amazing gathering and dispersing of these moisture-laden wisps of air passing by. I can condense hours into minutes and begin to understand more fully the passage of the weather before me. I've seen such things used before on television and the movies and the Weather Channel, to name a few. But now this feature is available to me, and I can choose to watch a sunrise or a sunset in minutes and not hours. The accumulation of a day's snowfall in a minute. It allows me to see the big picture. However, it's not real time. It's compressed. I still have to experience every moment of every second, every minute, of every hour, of every... Well, you get the idea. That's what real life is like. That app on my phone isn't magic. It just takes a snapshot of moments and stitches them together to give the illusion of time passing quickly. Now, think of that time lapse in terms of this chapter in Habakkuk. Habakkuk is going to recall in rapid-fire succession several acts of God done in the history of his people. Why? In the same way that Job suddenly understands the big picture of God when we read in Job chapter 42, verses 1 through 3. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? 
Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Job, what changed your mind? I only need to read the previous four chapters of Job, and I have my answer. Habakkuk, what did you hear that now causes you to suddenly utter this prayer of confidence? Well, again, I only need to read the previous two chapters of Habakkuk to understand. For Habakkuk utters words not unlike what we hear around us daily. Perhaps we ourselves have uttered the same sentiments that he utters in chapter 1 and verses 2 and 3. How long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you, violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity? And who do you idly look at wrong? That's what the scoffers are scoffing, saying, why doesn't your God do something? But what Habakkuk, and what you, and me, and the scoffers don't see is the big picture. We can't or won't see the hand of God in Scripture and realize he was working. God gives Habakkuk a sneak preview as to what is about to happen. He tells him in chapter 1 and verses 5 through 6, Look among the nations and see, wonder, and be astounded. For I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if told. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, who march through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings not their own. Those Chaldeans, also called Babylonians elsewhere, are already on the march. They are about to sack Nineveh. Read the book of Nahum. They have their eyes on Tyre and Sidon, and Jerusalem, and Egypt. Nebuchadnezzar, the captain and soon-to-be king, is rolling over kingdom after kingdom. And Habakkuk sees it coming. But Habakkuk doesn't realize that the Chaldeans are doing God's will and are about to punish the wickedness of Judah that he's complained about. In chapter 2, Habakkuk tells God that he'll take a stand at his watch post on the tower to see what will happen. God tells him to write it in plain letters on a tablet for everyone to see, or it will surely happen. But it will happen in God's time. If only Habakkuk had a time-lapse feature to see those moments stitched together and condense those months and years into mere moments. Babylon is there to do God's bidding to punish the wickedness of Judah. But because of Nebuchadnezzar's evil heart, God must punish him as well. Woe after woe is leveled against the Chaldeans in chapter 2. It is then, after this, that Habakkuk utters his prayer in chapter 3 and remembers that God has indeed, through the ages, done what he has promised, and in righteousness appeared time after time. We begin in verse 2 of Habakkuk 3. O Lord, I have heard the report of you in your words. O Lord, do I fear? In the midst of the years, revive it. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Teman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His splendor covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. It is now that Habakkuk can truly, with the vision of a time-lapse sequence, as it were, see God's hand at work in history. In the end, though surely trouble and disaster loom on the horizon, Habakkuk is secure knowing God is in control, and he does answer prayer. He does hear the cries of his people. Verse 16 of Habakkuk 3. I hear and my body trembles. My lips quiver at the sound. Rottenness enters my bones. My legs tremble beneath me. Yet I will quietly wait for the day of trouble to come upon people who invade us. Centuries later, in a vision of the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos, we hear a group of martyrs who wondered the same thing. We begin in verse 9 to give it context of Revelation 6. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the witness they had borne. They cried out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then they were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete, were to be killed as they themselves had been. Centuries later, we today may be laden with the same questions as to how the world can go on as it does. But we can read Habakkuk's message and be assured that God has all things well in hand. We don't need a time lapse to show us the way. We can find comfort moment by moment in the Lord.
Do you have that confidence and comfort? And Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow and look at another of the great chapters in the Bible.